All right, in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 great tips to help you paint landscapes. All right, welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better, faster. So the tips that I'm gonna be going over in this video are gonna be given in the order at which I came across them in this landscape painting. All right, let's jump on in with tip number one, which is get a good composition. Now, this is the reference photo that I'm gonna be using for this painting, and right off the bat, I can say that this is going to be the focal point this trolley, and I'm gonna make sure that it is the focal point by having the contrast and values be the highest right here, meaning that this dark of the window and this light panel on the side here, I wanna make sure that these are the lightest and darkest values in the painting, and the fact that they're right next to each other is gonna draw the eye to it, helping it be our focal point. I also like this composition because there's a lot of lines leading us to that focal point, like these cars right here, the shadow on the road there, the tree line here coming down, also the trees here, cars on this side of the road. I'm gonna use this building back here and use that as another directional device pointing us to our focal point. And a lot of horizontals that can be nicely counteracted by verticals like these trees, and the light post. And also to keep us from shooting off the corner up here, these trees will act as a good bumper. Now there's a whole lot more I could talk about with composition. I've made a whole video on composition. If you wanna check that out, I'll put a link to it above right now. All right, moving on to tip number two, which is get an accurate drawing, not necessarily a detailed drawing. When I draw my landscape, I'm squinting my eyes and I'm only trying to see the big shapes. And that's the only thing I'm concerned about drawing. I'm just considerate about the correct location of the big shapes. A lot of times I see people going in and trying to draw out every single little thing that they see. And that's gonna cause you to paint very timidly and you can almost get caught up in this process of coloring inside the lines. You know, it's important to get things accurate. You know, you want your trees to be the right size and you want your road and the perspective being correct and looking right, but you don't have to go in and draw every single little tree branch that you see. You can also see that I'm drawing in with thin paint. And when I'm drawing, I'm really thinking about it more as mapping out the scene and putting whatever I need to put in to help me move on to the next stage. And if I have to block you know, a big shadow shape in with some darker paint, I'll do that. Sometimes when I think the values are gonna be tricky in a scene, I'll do a full underpainting. It's whatever you feel you need to move on to the next stage of adding color. All right, now if you struggle with colors and color mixing, I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but I do offer the color mixing video for my Foundations of Oil Painting course for free. If you wanna check that out, I'll put a link to where you can get that in the description below. All right, tip number three. If you don't know where to start with a painting, try starting with the sky. A lot of painters like to start with the sky because they find it the easiest element of the scene to get right without any help from anything else. You know, once you're in the thick of the painting, it's kind of easy to compare values, compare colors, and dial things in right. But right in the beginning, when you don't have anything there, it's tough to get something the right color and value right off the bat. But if you feel comfortable that you can get the sky right, put it in first because then you can use that to key in the rest of your painting. All right, tip number four. Start with the focal point of the scene. This is a completely different way to start a scene. It's actually the second thing that I put in, in this one. So I kind of combined the two a little bit. But a lot of times starting with the focal point of the scene is really helpful because like I said earlier, the focal point is gonna have the darkest dark and the lightest light or like the highest area of contrast in the scene. So if you can get in that dark dark and that light light, it's gonna make finding the rest of the painting easier because all the other values in the rest of the painting are gonna fall in between that. So the focal point can be a really good key to figure out at the beginning to use for the rest of the painting. All right, tip number five is be aware of atmospheric perspective. An atmospheric perspective is the idea that as things get further away from you, certain things happen. Certain colors drop out, first yellows and then reds, then you're left with blues. This is why things further away tend to be cooler. They also tend to be less saturated in color. Also, their values are closer together. The lights and the darks aren't as extreme. Now, you can see that with the trees that I put in here way in the distance. They're pretty cool. The color isn't very saturated. And there's light and dark, but they're not that different from one another. And utilizing all of these things is gonna help sit these trees 
far in the distance. The last thing you want is trees in the distance, like meshing with trees that are in the foreground and you don't know where one starts and stops and you just kind of lose all the depth in your painting. Believe me, I've had that happen. All right, tip number six. When it comes time to painting trees, make sure to identify the form with a light side and a shadowed side. I've actually just got done making a whole video on painting trees. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link to it above right now. But to sum it up, you want to think of the trees not as a bunch of branches with leaves, but as almost like big mounds of clay. And there's a light source hitting it, so there's a shadowed side and there's a light side. You want to identify that first. You'll have the opportunity to go back in with smaller shapes and detail and cut back into these shapes to make them read more as trees. But if you don't identify that basic form, it's gonna be really easy to get lost and you're gonna be piling on paint. You're not gonna know what's going on. It's gonna get frustrating and you're gonna end up with some flat looking trees. All right, tip number seven is don't be afraid to simplify complex things. For example, in this scene, there's this building way back behind these trees and you can see some of it and some of it's covered by foliage and you know there's a lot going on back there and i know if i try and paint this exactly how i see it it's just going to be a giant headache so i try and break it down and i think okay like what is making up this building there's pretty much two main things there's the brick and then the white trim on the porch and each one of those has a light side or a shadowed side that's four colors i think four colors is enough to suggest this building in the background. You know, but I try and think about it and have it make sense. So I think, you know, there is this roof over the porch and that roof is what's casting the shadow on the brick. So I'm going to get this strip of shadow above the strip of light with the bricks. That's gonna make sense for it casting that shadow. And for the white trim, when it's in shadow, it's gonna be kind of more of a bluish purple. So I'm gonna put it in using that and then come back with some white and a little bit of yellow ochre and kind of pick and choose where I want light to be hitting this white trim. You know, maybe I'll throw a window or a door in here or there, but also if there's any areas that I don't like or I kind of don't know what to do, I can always use some of this distant foliage and, and kind of put it going over top of it so I don't have to worry about painting those areas. So it's okay to make things up. Just make sure they make sense when you make them up. All right, tip number eight is take comfort in knowing that you're not gonna get things perfect right off the bat. You know, I'm guilty of this, of, you know, seeing other people's work, you know, great painters and thinking, oh, they must have just gotten it, you know, right off the bat. Every stroke was perfect, every color and value. They didn't have to adjust anything. It was just, boom, they put it on and it was great. That's not the case. You know, there's a lot of working and reworking. For example, like on this painting, the street, these shadows on the street and the light of the street, like it took me a long time to kind of dial in and figure these out. Like I had to try one color and value and then adjust it and then bounce to the shadow, adjust that, bounce to the light, adjust that. That. and it took some time before I got it to where I wanted it. So don't be afraid of getting something wrong and know that with oil paint, you can't really mess up. You can always wipe it or scrape it down or change the color, redo it. And knowing that you can't mess up, it's gonna cause you to paint with a certain level of confidence. And there's nothing that makes a painting better than a strong sense of confidence. All right, staying with this road, I'm gonna go into tip number nine which is utilize a variety of brushwork to help create depth. Like with the street, I added more brushstrokes in the foreground because you know, as things get closer to you, you can see more, get more detail. So I used more smaller brushstrokes up front in the street and less and you know, more simplified brushwork the further back in the street I went. This also is very helpful when it comes to painting grass. Uh, a good thing to think about is that horizontal brushwork tends to recede in the distance and vertical brush strokes tend to come forward. So whenever you got, you know, like a lot of grass or something and you have to convey depth with it and it all looks just like one color, use a variety of brushwork to push some areas back and other areas forward. All right, and tip number 10 is, when it comes to painting cars, think of these six things. The dark shadow under the car that's a lot of times connected to the tires, the general color of the car, the sky color reflected on the top of the car, the dark windshield, the dark grill, and the headlights and taillights. A lot of times, if you can just identify those pretty simply, your car is going to read. And a lot of times in a landscape, you know, cars parked on the side of the street aren't gonna be the focal point. You're not gonna wanna draw a ton of attention to them. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero, here telling you to go get painting.